Hello, my name is Lisa Great, and I am with the Apostolic Resource Center. I'm so glad that you could join us today for another uh, video blog from the Word of God. I was in prayer this morning, as I've told you in the past, if you followed any of these video blogs. And I was praying through Psalm 79 today. If you've never prayed the Psalms, man, there is such revelation and insight that God gives you as you just take line by line and begin to pray through what the psalmist is saying. Some of it needs to be filtered through the reality that we are on this side of the cross, not that side. But once you do that, the reality of what's being spoken as you learn about the nature and the heart of God, there's so much of who we are as people in these psalms. It puts, it gives vernacular to some of the challenges that we face as people and to, and to know it gives comfort to know that we're not the only one that has ever gone through these things. So I just want you to know that you're not alone in whatever the battle is that you are facing, whatever the challenges that you're going through, whatever the victory you are experiencing, whatever the, the, the good news you are, you are sharing, it's good to have others. It's good to have people. We are the body of Christ. We are in this together. And so I want to encourage you today. Open your mouth and share. Let other people in. Don't be an island unto yourself. Bring people into your life. Let them hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let them know that you are not alone. Let them know that you are there for them and that you will be there for them. Stand with one another. We are a body and we are a community. Anyway, I wanted to share something with you today that the Lord revealed to me just this morning. I like to give you things fresh off the press from God. And here's what I was reading in Psalm uh, chapter 79, verse 12. The psalmist was going on about some different things that were happening to him and the people of Israel. And he starts talking to the, um, talking to the Lord about his neighbors, not neighbors as in love your neighbor as yourself, neighbors as in enemies of Israel. And he said in verse 12, return to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom the reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. This just jumped off the page this morning to me at 530 in the morning as I was praying this. This idea of a sevenfold return of the reproaches upon the enemy that they have reproached upon you. There is a, a reproach that has come upon the people of God. Some of it is, is, is due to to the fact that many in the body of Christ are worshiping other gods. They claim to be Christians, but they believe in a lot of things that are not biblical. They are not walking in obedience to the voice of God and to the word of God. And those kinds of things bring reproach upon the name that is Yahweh, that is God. But in this situation, he's saying, here's the deal. We realize how we've messed up and we need you, God. And he's saying, return to our neighbors, return to our enemies sevenfold into their bosom, the reproach which which they have reproached you, O Lord. The psalmist understood that the, the reproach that was coming against Israel was actually coming against the name of God. That is one thing about the Israelites in the Bible that I totally appreciate is that they didn't take anything personally. They saw it as people defying the armies of their God, defying the name of their God, reproaching the name of Is the God of Israel. They didn't take it personally. They It affected them personally. But they knew that this was bigger. They knew this was about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the enemies were reproaching. And this is where they just were like, that's it. We, we declare sevenfold reproach upon those that have reproached you, O oh God. Because to them, if you touched them, you were touching God. And if you touched God, you were touching them. They were so interconnected in their understanding of them and God being one, that if they were taunted, if they were reproached, if they were defied, they felt like that was happening to their God. And so it was just fascinating when I read this. Because you see, I knew about the Proverbs 631 sevenfold. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the Proverbs 631 says, sevenfold says, Men do, do not despise the thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger. Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold. He must give up all the wealth of his house. Many people have talked about the sevenfold restoration of the finances that have been stolen from the people of God. 
But right here in Proverbs 78, or I'm sorry, 79 verse 12, it says there's a sevenfold reproach to be re returned upon the enemies of God that have reproached the people of God. And you may say, well, we're not reproached. Well, maybe it's because you don't know what reproach is. Reproach means to shame. Reproach means, I wrote this down, um, re reproach means to shame. Reproach means to disgrace. Reproach means to expose, to strip, to defame, to defy, to taunt. Have you heard the whispers of the enemy telling you, that the promises God spoke over you are not going to come true. That is the enemy reproaching you. Have you heard the voice of the enemy trying to rob you of something, whether it's in your marriage, your ministry, your money, or in any other, your, anything related to your family, where he's tried to make God look bad because you bear the name yod heh vav -Heh. That's the reproach. That's what the enemy does. He's a master at it. He's done it from go. He did it to David. This is, you know, when I found this word defy under the definition of reproach, I, I immediately went to 1 Samuel 17. And it says the Philistine, in 1 Samuel 17, 10, it says the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. The whole chapter of 1 Samuel 17 is all about the reality that the Philistine of Gath, the giant, the, his name was Goliath. He had come and he was reproaching the armies of Israel. He was defying the armies of the living God. He was shaming. He was making a mockery of the God of Israel as he came out for 40 days and 40 nights and defied the armies of the living God. Until finally one man stood up and said, enough is enough. What is this I hear? This uncircumcised Philistine coming against the armies of the living God, seeking to defy. How dare you reproach? How dare you shame? How dare you try to bring a, a sense of disgrace upon the God of Israel? There was one man that remembered their history. Because in 1 Samuel chapter 5, read it, 5 and 6. The very God that Goliath worshipped, which was Dagon. He was using Dagon to curse Israel. That is the very God in 1 Samuel 5 and 6. That when the ark of the Lord was brought into the temple of Dagon, the God of the Philistines, that, that idol fell face down. Not once, twice. And the second time he fell face down, he lost his head and his hands. That very idol that the Philistines thought was going to save them is the very God that they were defying in the book of 1 Samuel. And David said, oh, no, you don't. I know my history. I know that when Samuel, the prophet <laughs> that anointed me king, heard about the Ark of the Covenant that was in the temple of Dagon, they called for it to be brought back because that God is inside of me. And you're defying the God that is in the Ark of the Covenant. The same God is inside of me and you're defying him. And that same God is inside the armies of Israel. The only difference between Saul's army and the men of Israel and David is that David knew that the Ark of God was inside of him and he was being defied. And he wanted to see the reproach return sevenfold upon the enemies of Israel. And so what happened? He took sticks and stones and a slingshot, it says. And you know, when I read that in 1 Samuel 17 today, you know what I thought? Of an old rhyme that we used to say when I was a kid growing up in the 70s. We used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. The Lord revealed to me today, you know where that came from? It, it originated back in the 1800s. But you know where I think it came from? I think it came from right here in 1 Samuel 17. Because David took a stick, he took five smooth stones, and he took a slingshot. And Goliath said to him, what are you doing coming out against me with sticks and stones? He didn't see the slingshot. He saw the sticks and stones. And I could hear David in his head. It probably, he probably didn't do this. I'm just saying I could, if I, I could hear him if he did say this. 
sticks and stones are going to break your bones and your words are not going to hurt me. My sticks and my stones are going to break your bones, but your words are not going to hurt me. David would not allow him to, excuse me, David would not allow himself to be paralyzed by the psychological warfare of taunting that Goliath released upon the armies of Israel. He heard the psychological warfare of taunting, defying reproaching the armies of Israel and the God of Israel. And David refused to be paralyzed by that psychological warfare because he knew his God. He knew that Goliath was a, was, was a worshiper of Gath, of Dagon, that he was one of the lords of the Philistines from Gath and that they worshiped the God Dagon and that in, in 1 Samuel 5, that very God fell face down before the Ark of the Covenant twice. And what did Goliath do when he got hit with a stone in his forehead? The Bible said the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell face down at the feet of David. Who carried the Ark of the Covenant on the inside of him. He was a carrier of the presence of God that was not going to allow the spirit of Dagon to defeat the armies of the living God. He was not going to let the spirit of Dagon taunt and defy the armies of the living God because he knew that Dagon fell face down in that temple so he could fall face, fall down, face down in front of him on this battlefield. And that's exactly what happened. Compare 1 Samuel 5 and 6 to 1 Samuel 17. You will see the connection. But you got to tie it in to Psalm 79 verse 12. Because it says that the, the Lord is going to re, re, uh, repay sevenfold reproach upon our enemies. For the psychological warfare that has come against the body of Christ. For the taunting, the defying, the reproaching. The shame, the disgrace. Much of the body of Christ has been paralyzed. But there are some that have become one with the word of God. They have become one with their weapons of warfare. And they are using the word of God just like a stone to take out the, the Philistine army that is seeking to defy the armies of the living God. Because just like he fell in 1 Samuel 5 at the feet of the Ark of the Covenant, just like he fell face down in front of David on that battlefield in the Valley of Elah, he is going to fall face down at your feet. He's taunting. I know because I hear his voice. I can hear him in the distance. I can hear the echo. I can hear the shame. I can hear the reproach as he tries to say, where is your God? But in Psalm 79, 9 and 10, it says, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of your name and deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? Israel and yod heh vav -Heh were considered a team they were considered one. Israel would go and worship other gods and God called it adultery. Why did he call it adultery? Because they were one and they were giving themselves to another. That's adultery. You see, that's the thing with us as Americans. That's the thing with us as Westerners. That's the thing with modern day Christianity all over the world. We don't see ourselves as one with our God. So we go and prostitute ourselves with other gods, with other ideas, with other systems in the world, with other belief systems. And Paul would say, who has bewitched you? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be reproached. God cannot be defied. God cannot be disgraced. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit in which the Spirit of God lives. We are the carriers, are the ark of the covenant. 
We are one with our God. If we have chosen to abide in him and his word abides in us, John 15. And I want to encourage you today. If you've been paralyzed by psychological warfare, I will stand in the valley of Elah for you. And we will defeat the armies of the living God. Because after David took out Goliath, all of the armies of Israel pursued the Philistines into their camps and plundered them. It does not matter who stands in the valley and defeats the giant. The whole army gets to plunder the camp of the enemy. But we must remove the reproach and the shame and the defying of the name of our God and our nation. The name of our God and our family. The reproach and the name of our God and our churches. We must remove it. And just as in the days of 1 Samuel 17, God is looking for a man, looking for a woman, looking for a voice in the decade of the mouth. Who is going to stand up and declare, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is defying the armies of the living God? Who is it? This Philistine, his only weapon is psychological warfare. That's his only weapon, is psychological warfare. And all he can do is paralyze you. But if we can take the word of God and renew our mind, he will breathe in us again. For Matthew 4, 4 says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of our God Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of our God, every word in the word of God is like CPR on somebody that has been paralyzed by the psychological warfare of the Philistines. I'm telling you, the Lord is for you. And there is a company of warriors. There is a company of prophets. There's a company of people that are standing up against the Philistine giants. And in the words of Dutch Sheets, giants will fall. They're going to fall. They're falling as we speak. With every word we decree, with every word we declare, they're falling. And we decree and we declare sevenfold reproach upon our enemies. We decree sevenfold return of our finances that have been stolen for us. We decree sevenfold restoration of everything that we've been robbed of. Sevenfold we decree it and declare it today because the word of God says we can according to Proverbs 631 and Proverbs 7912. We decree it and we declare it today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a war of words. And in the decade of the mouth, your decree is your weapon. Become one with the word of God. Let the word of God take up residence in you. Let the word of God become the sword in your mouth that allows the truth that will set you free. Let this word become your weapon. It will give you strength. It will give you courage. It will give you confidence. It will cause, it'll humble you <laughs> because humility is how God wins. Not through arrogance and pride, but through humility, which means you can't think you know something in here. You got to read it daily. It's fresh every morning. It's new. You know what the Bible says in Lamentations 3, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. This is a living book and we serve a living God. We must come to this book. We must come to our God as learners, as listeners, as lovers. So that he can teach us what we need to know for that day, in that moment, in that hour. Be encouraged, my friends. You're not alone. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And no tongue that rises against you in judgment shall prevail. I decree it and I declare it today. Any psychological warfare that has come against you, I command those voices silenced. 
and I release the voice of God over you. I break the deaf and dumb spirit off of you, and I decree you can hear the voice of God. I decree you can see the kingdom of God, and you can know the heart of your God. Yahweh is God. There is no other God. He is God, and he is alive, and he is for you and not against you. Be blessed, my friends. My name is Lisa Great with the Apostolic Resource Center, www.apostolicresourcecenter.org. This is my full-time job. I encourage you, if you would love to be a partner with this ministry, if you would be willing to be a partner with this ministry, we would love to have you give a financial gift every month to help support what God is doing in and through us. We have just begun. We have just begun. Be blessed. Have a great day.